thing that the thing that I would say is that um, each, each journey is a journey that you make, yeah. right? Your mum is responsible for her journey. You're responsible for your journey. Because when you stand before the almighty God, like he's not going to say, what did your mum do? Yeah. And when your mum stands before almighty God, yeah. he's not going to say, what did your son do? Yeah. Like you'll each account for your own lives, yeah. you know? And the, you, you have, we have a moral responsibility to save our own soul first. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're drowning, like if you, you can't save anyone until you yourself are safe in the lifeboat. Then when you're in the lifeboat, then you're in a position to pull other people into the lifeboat yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I would say that, I would say that, like, you, you know, from the way that you've portrayed the situation, I understand your concerns, yeah. right? But I would also add to that, that it's not my place to judge. Yeah. It's not your place to judge. No. It's God's place to judge, exactly. you know? Um, and the, the question around sexuality is an incredibly charged one. Yeah. Because we recognize that people have their feelings in a way that they can't control. Exactly. I can no more make myself attracted to men than your woman, uh, the, the, your, your woman, yeah. your mother could make herself attracted to a man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I do believe in choices. I do yeah. believe she made a choice. Yeah. yeah. I don't, because obviously I'm here. Yeah. So there was a man in the beginning. Yeah. And I think that her choice was that she just fell in love with a woman yeah. afterwards. Yeah. So I don't believe um, as such as something that you're born with. Yeah. I do believe it's something that you, you have a preference to. Yeah. Um, and it's that, that it's a choice is what's the, the, the sort of no salvation for the yeah. soul almost because you chose it. Yeah. Rather than it being that's just how I am. Well, no, I think I think the the what you act on your urges because in Christianity what we teach is you don't relate to Jesus through your sexuality. Yeah. You relate your sexuality to Jesus. Right. So you don't you don't you don't put your sexuality first and then your relationship with Jesus. You put your relationship with Jesus first and then your sexuality. Yeah. yeah. So that means hand in hand with Jesus, well, exactly because being a Christian is like it's, it's been a complete way of life. Yeah. It, it's meant to influence all of our decisions, all of our reactions, all of our perceptions, yeah. all of our sentiments, all of our um, values. Yeah. The ethical system we live by, our sense of history, the doctrines we believe in. Yeah, it's having a link to something profound. Yeah, a lot different yeah. to what you have a link to in your world. Yeah. And I would say that if you want the best way, like, you, you know, be, you know, you've heard that phrase, be the example that you want to see. Yeah. Right? If you want to, if you, if you want to see your mother Christian, let her see you Christian. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to become a finger wagging, <laughs> judgmental, mum, you're, you're insane, yeah. you're going to burn in hell. That kind of emotionally uh, childish way of being Christian is something yeah. that I don't applaud, I don't support it. Yeah. You've got to have emotional intelligence. Yeah, it's just a, a, like a fanatical finger wagger, basically. Yeah. Screaming that everyone's going to hellfire and bring on if you're not going to do yeah. what you're to do. Let me, let me explain a different way about how Christians perceive truth. Because a lot of people, they look at truth and they think that truth is like a fence around a field. And you're either on the right side or the wrong side of the fence. Right? That's not how I see truth. I see truth as a fire in the middle of a field. And there are some people who are very close to that fire. And because they're close to that fire, their shadow is very pronounced. You know? Their shadow can be seen very easily. Yeah? And there are some people who are far away from that fire and they can still feel something of the fire. They still get a bit of the light. They still get a bit of the heat, but their shadow is not very pronounced because they're so far away. Those that are closest to the fire are the ones we call the saints. Most of us are kind of like a medium distance. Yeah. And what we've got to do is we've got to encourage one another to move closer to the fire. I think I heard you use this analogy. Yeah. And, and that's the journey we're all on. Yeah. You know, and that's the journey that, that I'm encouraging you is like move closer to that fire, mm. that light that is Christ. Yeah. Because he is the light of the world. He is that life of the world. He is that way that our souls are built up in truth. Because yeah. we've got to build our lives. We've got to build our lives on meaning. And you can only build your life on meaning if you build it on truth. 
Yeah, it requires such a drastic change in your life. Yeah. Well. So, so it's like you have to give up things or yeah. you have to sort of compromise, no more compromising with things, it's this way now. Yeah. Or, you know, your general opinions sort of have to change a little bit. Your moral standards have to change a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. Everything yeah. has to be tweaked a little bit yeah. in order to fit in line with that religion or the faith. Yep. It, uh, you got it. Otherwise, I feel like if you're not, I'm very like an all or nothing sort of thing. So it's like yeah. if you're not walking in that, that, on that path, you're yeah. not on the path. Amen. And so when people say to me, you know, oh, yeah, but yeah. You know, I'm a Christian, but I don't do this, that, the other, but yeah. you're not really a Christian. Now. And I'm yeah. very much of that. Because you would only be a Christian if you're doing what's told in the book. Mm -hmm. And by yep. there's there's sort of, there's no there's no halfway. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. You either become a Christian and you follow the teachings and yeah. the scriptures or you don't. You got it. Bro, and like then that's pretty much you, you, the end of it. You're making exactly the right assessment. Yeah. Right. And and the process that we call this is we call it metanoia, which is this idea of repentance. And repentance is not something that you just do once. Repentance is actually a way of life. Yeah. And so what you do is value by value, belief by belief, attitude by attitude, habit by habit, um, you change to conform yourself to Christ, you know? And, and I, I, would, I would encourage you to, to be bold and brave in taking that way forward. If you see Christ for who he is, then embrace him as your Lord. Because at the end of the day, like to become a Christian means that what you're doing is you're casting off the world. Yeah. You're casting off these temporary it's desires. Cool, it is, it's but it's like, also it's, it's, it's also a great adventure. It's kind of like the greatest, you know what I mean by existentialism, right? So existentialism is the inner journey of the soul. And becoming a Christian is the greatest existential journey that you'll ever go on. Yeah. You know, it will transform you. It will transform your relationship. I'm making a massive assumption here that you guys are in a relationship. Is that fair? No? You're just friends? Yeah. Fire. Okay. That'll teach me for making a giant assumption. Assumptions yeah, yeah. Assumptions are the mother of all ass. You know what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, so my apologies. I just made that assumption because, you know. But but the thing is, the, the thing is, is, you know, like becoming a Christian is is you're casting off the world. You're casting off this liberal progressive society with all of its backward values and with all of its crazy beliefs. And what you're doing is you're saying, I'm not gonna be taught by culture. I'm not gonna be taught by the enlightenment philosophers. I'm not gonna be taught by this pop star or that celebrity. I'm a student of Jesus and I wanna follow in his way, you know? And I, I would just ask you, what, you know, what, what do you guys think of Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? But well, Jesus is real. 100%. Yeah. I mean, thanks be to God. There's so much documentation about him. Absolutely. From the Bible. I Amen. It, yeah. I know yeah. he was a real person. Yeah. I know he died on the cross. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I was asked, do you believe in his resurrection? Yeah. So my answer to that was, I'm not sure. Fair and enough. They said, do you believe in his miracle birth? So I said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Why can you not have a resurrection? Yeah. But you can have a miracle birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. kind of a, a bit of a silly thing to say. I don't believe in that, but I believe in that. Yeah. So the two kind by, of go together. Yeah. It's, they're both miracles. Amen. So by that, the miracle birth, and therefore, yes, I would believe in his resurrection. Then, brother, you're already, if you believe. I just find it yeah. very difficult and quite scary to put the foot into that direction and start walking. It's a, can I ask yeah, you, do you believe in the resurrection? I do, yeah. Right. Then you're already a Christian in your beliefs. Yeah. If you believe that Jesus Christ was a real person, all right, let me ask you, do you believe that he was the Messiah? Yeah. Do you believe that he was the, the, the Son of God? Right. Do you believe he was crucified? Yeah. Do you believe he was resurrected? Bro, you're a Christian in your beliefs. In my heart, yeah. Yeah. So it's all, just hard to so the, the, outwardly yeah. be a Christian is where I'm struggling. It takes courage. Yeah. It takes so. courage. And the thing is, everybody thinks that walking by faith is some kind of, ooh, it's, it's, you're just taking a stumble into the dark. Yeah. But actually, if you, if you dig deep into anything that anyone believes, even atheists or agnostics, everybody's operating by faith. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Faith is absolutely normative to human behavior. The reason why you cross the road when the red light is on is because you have faith that the cars, cars will stop. Gone. You've got no guarantee that those cars are going to stop. Yeah. It's like when you get married. Are you guys married? Not to one another, but are you married no, to no, other people? No. Right? Yeah, I'm not making the same mistake <laughs> twice. Yeah, I'm not making the same mistake twice. But, no. you know, when you get to that happy day, 
that you're going to commit your life to someone, you don't know how it's going to turn out in 40 years. Yeah. You're making a faith commitment based on the present, yeah. right? And what I'm saying to you is if you have the beliefs already, now what you need to do is you need to take that first step in faith that says, I'm willing to call Christ my Lord and my Savior and my teacher. You know, and are you re are you ready to, to say that? Probably not right now, but in, in here, yes. But outwardly, I'm, 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 so what, what stops you from doing just, it outwardly? Just, I mean, I work in a pub. Right. So we come across so many different kinds of people. Yeah. I don't think I would be able to share as much as I like to talk about Christianity. And I really do enjoy that. Yeah. And about Jesus and about God and about, you know, things like that. I find that it, given my situations, it's going to be real hard for me to kind of express that side. Yeah. And I'd find it quite a waste if I was to have to shut that away. That's yeah. a personal thing. Yeah. Where I couldn't share it with people. It's that all or nothing attitude. And, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Kind of what, what I, but what I would say to you is that in terms of counselling, because forgive me for saying this, but if you recognise the true value of who Jesus is, that's not a strong reason not to call yourself his disciple. But what I would say is that you, you're not under an obligation the first day you're a Christian to go and tell, to force Jesus into every conversation that you have the next day. You're still a human being. You're still supposed to operate as a human being and, and still connect with people like a normal human being. Yeah. Like the first day you decide, right, I'm a Christian, yeah. you don't need to curl up your mum and say, repent, <laughs> repent. You know, that you don't need to do that. You still need to honor her as your mother. You still need to love her. And you still need to, to show her that you becoming a Christian has increased your love for her, not diminished your love for her. Right? And it's about working it out. What does... What does it mean for me to follow Jesus in my circumstances? Yeah. That does mean you might have to snip some things out of your life. Yeah, I mean, I don't smoke, I don't drink, yeah. I don't do drugs. You don't, you, you don't drink and you work in a pub? Yeah, I know. You're right. doing well. Thank you. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah, it's like... Can I buy you a drink? No. no. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just have water, thanks. Sparkling yeah. water. I'll take a fire for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to argue. All right. Is it your own pub um, or do you work no, for... No, I work for a company. I work right. for the, the same company you guys go to. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and you're more than welcome to join us tonight. We'll be going for a Sunday roast. I have work today. Right, I've okay. Got to leave here at four, so. Yeah. But the other thing was, um, what kind of, I mean, I don't want to join a, a church yeah. that is liberal. Good. Accepting of new wave, new world Good. kind of thoughts. Good. I want a church that is. It's, it's, it, it sticks to the original foundation of yeah. the beliefs and it doesn't really want to compromise yeah. because it shouldn't compromise. Yeah. The, 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 there is no compromise. Yeah. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't agree with it, then you're not part of it. Really. Yeah. And, but I don't really know what kind of... So I, I, I can... If you're in London, I can recommend specific churches in yeah, London. So. Right? So, I mean, you'll get this on the video sure. so you can play it back. You don't need to make a list. But I would say St. Patrick Soho which is a Roman Catholic church. Um, any, ortho, any Russian, Greek, or Eastern European Orthodox church, any okay. of those, any Orthodox church. Um, the um, Kensington Temple, which is a charismatic church, surprisingly, in Kensington. Um, London Tabernacle Church, which is, it's in Elephant and Castle. Okay, there is yeah. an East London. East uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well. I don't I don't know about that one. Okay. I can only recommend the one in Elephant and Castle. Right. Um so that's a, a sort of evangelical church. St. Helen's Bishop Gate. Okay. That is a very strong sort of Calvinist right. Church of England church. Um All Souls Church in Oxford Street. Okay. That's another good church you could go to. Um St. Mark's Coptic Cathedral, that's in Kensington. Um, yeah, I was tempted to just sort of have a one. I'm not going to join yeah. the Church of England. I, I understand. Me, I'm, I'm uh, really yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't blame you. But there is a Baptist church. Yeah. Which I'm not really quite sure what each denomination is about. So yeah. I think maybe I have to do a bit of research myself. Let, let me give you. Let me give you some. Let me give you some um, prisms by which to evaluate a good church from a bad church. So the first one is that they've got to be devoted to prayer, right? So they have to be genuinely, you know what I mean by devoted? What, what, t tell me, what, what does devoted mean? To pray regularly. No, devoted. What does the oh, word devoted mean? Um, tell me something you're devoted to. At the moment, I'm devoted to my family. Right, and how do you express that? Through love. Through love. In time. other words, time, love, money, money, energy, energy yeah. 
Yeah, right? That's what devoted is. Okay. Time, money, energy, right? right? Like seriousness about it, okay? So the, a good church is a church that is devoted to prayer, yeah? A good church is devoted to the sacraments, right? So some churches only have two sacraments, some churches have seven. I'm not bothered what number of sacraments they've got, but they practice the sacraments, yeah? So if you go to a church and they don't practice the sacraments, it's it's a, it might be a Christian society, it might be a perfectly good Christian society, but I wouldn't call it a church. A, a good church is devoted to the fellowship. That means that after the Sunday service, they don't just disappear, that they spend time with one another. They're spending time with one another in the middle of the week, that they are loving one another and that they're building one another up in the Lord. Yeah. And then the, the fourth, fourth thing that they are devoted to is the apostolic teaching. So that means that they take what the church teaches seriously. They take what the Bible teaches seriously. And what they're not doing is trying to make the Christianity bend around the world. No, they're trying to make the world bend, bend around, around Christianity, right? So those are your four things to look for okay. in a good church. Devotion to prayer, devotion to sacraments, devotion to one another, devotion to the apostolic teaching, right? So when you go into a church, you're going to assess it and you go, okay, how, how does it look in these four ways, yeah. right? Like men, yeah. we, lo we love to score things out of 10. So get a mark out of 10 and find the highest one in your league and, and go and go for that one, right? If you find a perfect church, don't join it because you'll ruin it. Yeah? yeah, it's an old joke, but like if you, if you've never heard that one. Yeah, yeah. If you find a perfect church, please don't join it because you'll just ruin it, right? But, and my point by saying that joke is that no church is perfect. Exactly. No church is perfect. No. And, and as a people, none of us are perfect. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing is, as, as human beings, when we go into a church, we bring all that's good with us yeah. and all that's bad yeah, with us. So. And then the church just becomes a collection of everything that is good about the people inside of it and everything that is bad about the people inside of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea is that we cultivate the good, those right. virtues yeah. of character, yeah. and we restrain the vices. Yeah. So we encourage one another in faith. We encourage one another in hope. We encourage one another in love. We encourage one another in prudence. We encourage one another in chastity. We encourage one another in charity. We encourage one another in wisdom. We encourage one another in courage. And we discourage lust and envy and pride and gluttony and those things that chain us to this world, you know? Yeah, no, it's just true, it's true, it makes sense. I did get asked a question. I was here. Yeah, a yeah, weeks yeah, ago, sorry. yeah, yeah. Um, no, go on. And someone asked me, they said, are you a Christian? I said, no, but I, I you know, I believe in what it is yeah. to be a Christian. Yeah. And he just brought up this thing and I tried to YouTube or Google it and I couldn't find an answer right. to it. And then it started to play on my mind. What's the question? The question was about the three days of Jesus being in, in the tomb. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then comparing it to Jonah's. Yes. In the way. Yeah. Let me show you. Please. Right. Because people, people who make this argument aren't reading the Bible very carefully, right? Because Jesus speaks about that event multiple times in multiple places. And he very clearly states what I'm going to show you, which is that the Son of Man will rise on the third day. On the third day. Not after. Right. Every on. YouTube video I looked at, one was giving me an answer, which was feasible. Yeah. But then it was different to another one's answer. Yeah. And then I was thinking, that because. Am I, how do we find a new right. so, brand on? So you're looking that up, Bob, do you mind if I offer a, a, a quick thought? In lots of languages, uh, they um, uh, time expressions are not exact. So, for example, do you know the French word for fortnight? I can't remember the exact word it is, but it literally so means... going to impress me with your French <laughs> that's, that's usually what, what happened. Happened. <laughs> no, The French word for fortnight literally means 15 days. Okay. That's not because French people think a fortnight is 15 days. I don't know why it is. But my point is there are lots of phrases, idiomatic expressions and languages in uh, different languages for periods of time yeah. that don't refer exactly to... Right. I mean, the best answer I've mean. got for that, honestly, and I did think it made sense, was that um, the Jewish calendar is actually different to the calendar we have nowadays, like the timing of it, the days and the nights, it, they yeah. change. Yeah, exactly. And that uh, he wasn't actually crucified until he was crucified on the Thursday. Right, so this, this, you want to say this yeah, yeah, so, so, the thing is, you've got to understand, 
the thing is that there's a difference between um bear with us yeah, no rush. Up. Oh, no. that's it that's it could you just bear with us yeah, no rush. Right. Could you just help us find where, where Christ prophesies the. Uh, yeah, do a quick Google search. Just put on the third day, Gospels, and a whole bunch of verses will come up. Yeah, because when I hear people sort of, you know, yeah, take so shots at it, I just need to clarify it before. Yeah, so, I can, so let, 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 we've got to understand that there's thing. a difference between what we believe and an apologetic. An apologetic is simply a rationalization of what we believe. Right. So those that make the high holy day argument, mm -hmm. the idea that Christ was crucified on a first day, mm -hmm. right? They still believe Christ was crucified and Christ was resurrected mm -hmm. and that the prophecy about the three days and nights was true, just like I do, even though I reject the high holy day argument. Okay. Right? Yeah, I've so heard that one. How we rationalize it is different from what we believe. Right. Yeah? You got one? That uh, internet's being slow. Okay, bear with us then. <laughs> it, was, it was just the fact that, the, that it was what he said that I found interesting that the only sign I'll give you is the sign of Jonah. Yes. And that then a Muslim fella said to me that if you count your days, they don't match up. So yes. without that, you don't have a, you right. don't have um, Jesus as God. That's you don't the have it. That he was completely you, justified in making. Yeah, I, I found no. some pretty good Could answers. You on the, the, the yeah, yeah, I'm trying, but it's just... All right. So, the, the passage that I want, bear with us. Do, 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 do. I, I did find an answer that I thought was satisfactory, but yeah. I just figured if... Because there was multiple answers to one question, I will, yeah. it was just more of a, is there a clear-cut kind of answer to this question? Or? Yeah, there is, there is, yeah. and I want to show it to you. Brilliant. I just need to find a passage where Christ talks about his, um, prophesies his crucifixion. Here we go. Go on. It's always the same when you want something. <laughs> you can't find it, yeah. This is so annoying. Do you have any particular... Oh, yeah. So the earliest example comes from 1 Corinthians. No, can we, can we pull it from, from the Gospels? Gospels? Yeah. There is. It's all right. Go on. I've got one. Very, very nearly. That is so annoying. There we go. Sign of Jonah. So what you've got is, you know, this generation is a wicked generation. It seeks for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it. Please keep looking. Yep. Yeah, will be given to it, but the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up with the men of this generation at the judgment and condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. So that's the bit that all the Muslims want you to ignore. Christ is saying that there's something greater than Solomon in himself. He's saying that he is greater than Solomon, that, that, and therefore he's saying something greater than Solomon here. The men of Nineveh will stand up against this generation at the judgment and condemn it because they repented at preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. Mm -hmm. So Christ is now saying that he's greater than Solomon, greater than Jonah. and he's greater than Jonah. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it away in a cellar, nor under a basket, but on a lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. The eye of the lamp of the body, when your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. So what he's talking about there is the fact that the thing that is in our soul, mm -hmm. that our desires tell us the nature of our soul, mm -hmm. what is in our soul, the thing that we desire after. Right. So we've got to ask ourselves whether we're desiring after the truth, mm -hmm. whether we're desiring after the good. Yeah. Um, but then he goes on. Then watch out that the light in you is not darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light with no dark part in it, it will be wholly illuminated as when the light illuminates you with its rays. Have we got one? Uh, very nearly. All right, I'll just have to find it from here. Bear with us. So, right, so the sign of Jonah, right? Mm -hmm. But just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, the, the, the Jonah, 
the sign of Jonah was that he was inside, belly dead, dead inside the belly of a whale for three days and three nights, yeah. right? So the sign that he's talking about is of one who has died and come back to life. Because if you read the prayer of Jonah, let me just show you the prayer of Jonah. Does he, sorry, but does, he, does he not say that I'll be in the belly of heart, the whale? Uh, heart of the earth? Yeah, so I want to show you. Have we got it? Uh, Mark 8.42. Right, bear with us. It does say after three days. Right, we want, I'll just pull it up on mine then. Because the, the Jewish calendar one was brilliant. It kind of hit the nail right on the head me, and it made perfect you. sense. Let me show you, bro. The internet, his internet is obviously crap, so let me just pull it up. You want EE? <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but you see the point? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, bro. It's just for me, that statement that's made there is a very bold statement. And it's something very clear and quite... Did you look up on the third day? Yes, I did. Quite to the point. Here we go. Right. Right. So if we pull up. Uh, there we go. So the Son of Man must suffer many things and be re except all. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the teachers of the law and must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Mm -hmm. So Christ talks about this time period in different ways. In some places he says three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. In some places he says on the third day. In some places he says after three days. Okay. The point is he's not, he's not expecting people to interpret it as three 24-hour periods. Okay. Right? So that's why in Luke 9, 22, he says that. Let me give you another one. Uh, in Luke 24, 7. That the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Now, on the third day means on the third day. It doesn't mean before or after. Okay. Now, we've already got that from the prophecy of Jonah. He says, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. He's just using a, a sort of po po a, a poetic parallel, okay. but he's talking about the state that he will be in. Because right. Jonah was dead yes. inside the whale, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then the one that our Alex read to you earlier was that Christ was going to be after three days. And we've just seen him say on the third day, okay. right? So the, 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 and the gospels are very clear that on the first day of the week, yeah. He rose again. Yeah. Let me show you another one. I've seen that on the first day of the week. Yeah. Um, but the first day of the week, of, according to like Jewish uh, calendar, is on a Sunday. Exactly. Not on the Monday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The first day of the week. And is then Sunday. does it? Cause, so where my confusion is also is just that. Right. I was reading that the day starts at six in the afternoon for the next day. Yeah. And uh, there was a high. Um, what did you call it? A high, uh, high holy day. High holy day. Yeah. And then also that the day structure. There was just multiple answers to one question, and I just figured that for me that's a really important kind of part yeah. of that that Bible. That yeah. is very important. So it, it's this is in Luke eighteen thirty three. In Luke eighteen thirty three, it says they will kill him on the third day. Yeah, which is Te Hermera. Te Triti Imera. Right? On the, third on day. the third day. So the point is, if, if someone uses like a phrase that's a reference to time, mm -hmm. but he's not being very specific, mm -hmm. it would be wrong of us then to e impose a very specific interpretation. If okay. I said to you, I'm going to be with you in five minutes, does that mean that I'm literally going to be with you in five minutes? No, but if your life depended on me being with you in five yeah. minutes and I said I will be there in five minutes, yeah. then you would expect me there in five minutes. But what I would say to you is that what you're doing is you're assuming that the criticism is a valid criticism. So um, when, when, Jonah, when Jonah pulls, look, if we should look at the, the prophecy in Jonah, because what I'm trying to show you is it refers to this time differential. Could you pull up the one where he says after three days? Yeah, that was the one in Mark. Yeah. 
Could you pull that up? Yeah. So, Sorry, I'm not a guy disguised as a normal guy who's no, no, a Muslim. No, 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 I know you've had them guys before. You've had them before. We know the difference. So my Good. point to you is that he's using these this, this reference to time. He's very elastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In one place, he says, after th this is all the same person speaking. Okay. Jesus says, after three days, in another one place. In another place, he says, on, on the, the third, third day. day. In another place, he says, three days and three nights. Okay. So the point is, he himself is not being extremely specific. specific yeah, he's given a, a rough idea. He's given a rough idea. Okay. And the, the, the Jonah prophecy, if we pull up what, what he says in Mark, if we pull up the Jonah bit, can we pull up the Jonah in Mark? When he was put in the tomb, he was dead though, yeah? Yes, he was in, dead. In body? Yes, yeah. okay. he was dead. So let's just pull up the... Just quickly regarding the passage in Mark, the Greek phrase that we looked at before, the three theme, and that's very specifically means on the third day. The okay. phrase that's sometimes translated after three days is meta tres emeras. That's a lot vaguer in Greek than the one in Luke that specifically says on the third day. And in yeah. overall, you're looking at this base as Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Essentially. So what, what... Aside from the days and the nights, yeah. the layout... So we've, you've, what we've got in, in scripture is the fact that these Muslims are coming and they're, they're, they're trying to play on the yeah. fact that in one passage, mm -hmm. Christ does say, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, as I will be. the son of man yeah. shall be in the, the belly of the earth. Yeah. Now, the thing is, what he was actually talking about there was not the time. Okay. He was talking about the state of being. As Jonah was dead in the belly of the whale, so shall the son of man be dead in the earth. And the reason why we know he's not talking about the time is because in other parts where he refers to the time again, he's non-specific. Yeah. He says on the third day. Well, if he's on the third day, that means there's no third night. Agreed? Yeah. Right. So Christ himself is not being specific about the time. Okay. So, does that I, make sense? It does. So we're wrong so, to impose a specificness yeah. on Jesus' words when he himself yeah. in multiple places was not specific. But Can I also add that the same Muslims who make this argument would leap on us like a ton of bricks if we applied those standards to Oh, 100%. Like, they apply completely 100%. Yeah, no, I 100% so I, I, I agree. Good. There's bigger problems with their book than there is with the, the Bible, I believe, without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. But it was just... It, the other perspective of that a solution to that kind of problem was just really interesting about yeah. the the fact that the Jews structured their days differently and that there was um, a higher thingy and that it did work out by this guy's calendar yeah. it actually did work out to three days and three nights on the nose but the reason why people make that argument is because they have they believe the criticism mm. without a genuine understanding of the text mm. If I say to you, right, I'll see you on Thursday at one, yeah? But then I, on another time, I see you on Thursday around one. Mm. Then another time I say to you, I'll see you on Thursday after one, mm -hmm. just after one. Like, you know that it's one-ish, yeah. but you're not, knee, you, you don't, you wouldn't accuse me of lying because I'm a bit vague about the exact time. Yeah. The, the, this sense of precise, have we got it? Yep. Yeah, sense of precision. precise timing mm. is, a, is an industrial modern thing. Yeah. If you go to any place in the unindustrialized world, like, you know, or c countries that have un only just industrialized, they're very relaxed about time. <laughs> they're very relaxed. You know, they'll, they'll meet you at two. And what they mean is, you know, within two hours of two o'clock. Yeah. Like you go to places in Africa and you well, say, "Well, from we call that drug dealers' time." Right, right. But, but do you know what? <laughs> I'll be there in ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right. But do you know what I'm saying? Is that is that it's the Western mindset that is literalist, and it's the Western mindset yeah. that's exact, and that's because of industrialization and science. Mm. Christ was speaking into an agricultural world where the concept of time was, and, and how people approach time was much more relaxed. Mm. So these Christians, they're not. It's not that they're, they're, they're believing in something bad, but these Christians who try to make a literal interpretation of the time mm -hmm. fit, they're doing it because they have un, unquestioningly just accepted the criticism. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you what Jesus was talking about when he talked about in the tomb, okay. right? Right? So, well, th this bit. So he says here, an evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah, the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, 
Remember, I just showed you a passage where he says, on the third day. So clearly, when he's talking about three days and three nights, he's doing that because that's how long Jonah was in the belly of the whale. Yeah. And he's doing it for sort of the poetry of it. Mm -hmm. But he can still be the third day with three days and three nights. Yeah, but there's the, the reason so why... So they kind of do go together. The Gospels show that Christ was crucified on a Friday mm. and he was because he was crucified before the Sabbath. And the Sabbath happened on a Saturday. And it wasn't a high Sabbath. No, no, they may well have been. They may well have yeah. been. My, and this is what I'm saying. Those Christians who have that argument, I don't believe that they're doing anything wrong. Okay. I just okay, don't. Cool. I just, That's fair. That's yeah, fair. Okay, I, I, I just get don't it. agree I with I thought you was that, uh, that sort of dismissing that as an answer because that answer, it, it am, literally, it kind of settled my, my yeah. immediate panic a little bit. Yeah. My, my point to you is, my, my, I don't ag agree with that answer, mm. but if you hold that answer, I don't think it endangers your faith. Okay. I just think that you've got other lesser problems mm. with the fact that the whole of Christian tradition for 2,000 years has been very clear Christ was crucified on a Friday and yeah. rose on a Sunday. Yeah. And that does fit with scripture, mm -hmm. because Christ said, I will rise on the third day. Yeah. So. There's no point taking him literally when in different places he's saying ever so slightly different things. You know, there's nothing wrong with Jesus not being precise when it comes to the time. Yeah. Because I want to show you what he really meant. He's but, saying, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale. Now, you can take it that it's about time. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You can Cheers. take it that it's about time, yeah? You can take it that way, but you can also understand it that it's about the state. Jonah was dead in the belly of the whale. So let me show you, okay? So if we go to the book of Jonah. But my, 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 uh, the thing that I would say is that as Christians, what we don't need to be doing is just going along with the assumptions that the Muslims give in their arguments. No, you also need to be able to defend it though. Yeah. As well. Like, and clearly this is true. defend it. Yes. Without allowance of any kind of, well, what if, or maybe this. But, it, it kind of, yeah. I feel that with a clear cut answer that doesn't really leave much room for wiggle, too much. I mean, yeah. it, not every answer is going to be solidly concreted without any way of kind of like trying to get around it a little bit. Yeah. But I just, as I say, I, th I found the Jewish calendar one yeah. and the high day one um, and that he was actually crucified on a Thursday. Yeah. It just, it fitted in perfectly to three nights and three days. Yes. And it, it just solidified that again for me. It kind of took away that urge, that little bit of panic I had. Yeah. Because someone mentioned to me about um, Muhammad being mentioned in this, uh, the Songs of Solomon. Yeah. And I went away and I, I looked it up and it was very clearly not. Yeah. There is no mention of him yeah. in that. It's a love song about Solomon's wife to Solomon. Yeah. And therefore, Muhammad comes years after that. So well, I think it's actually about his wife loving the... No, no, I think to it is. To Solomon, yeah, yeah. 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 And that would mean that she's now prophesizing about a guy she's gonna fall in love with in X amount of I mean, years, like if it's Muhammad. We can look at that. I forget yeah. which way it is, but it doesn't play out well. No, it doesn't. Muhammad. It doesn't. And, and so that just settled me straight away. Yeah. I thought, okay, that's great. It wasn't true. Yeah. And then when the guy asked me this one, it unnerved me a little bit. Right, so let me, let's me let just look at it. Because I'm saying to you that, yes, Christ said three days and three nights, but when you measure those words with Christ's other words, mm -hmm. we can dismiss the idea that he was being literal mm -hmm. and rather, for the sake of the poetry of his teaching, he just continued the, the rhythm of the three days and three nights. Okay. But the point that he was making was that as Jonah was dead in the belly of the whale, so Christ would be dead in the belly of the earth. Yeah. And I, I want to show you why I say that. Because when Jonah has been swallowed by the whale, his soul cries out to God. Because as Christians, we believe that your soul continues to exist. Mm -hmm. Right? And it goes and states, I called out of my distress to the Lord and he answered me. I cried for help from the depth of Sheol. Do you know what Sheol is? It's uh, hell, the, the afterlife. It's the afterlife. Yeah. So he's saying, look, I cried from the depths of Sheol. Yeah, from the afterlife. Now, do, you, do, do living bodies go to Sheol? <clears throat> no. Or do dead souls go souls. to Sheol? So Jonah was dead in the belly of the earth. Yeah. Now, if we go back to the prophecy of Jonah, he's saying, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale. How was Jonah in the belly of the whale? Dead. Dead. S for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man shall be what? Dead. In the belly of the earth. And then for three days, three nights, he does say that. 
but that's just because it has a rhythm to the fact that he said three days and three nights to Jonah. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's just sort of com he's just sort of like he's got this poetic comparison yeah. going on. I mean, uh, yeah. But you measure Christ's words with Christ's words, and in other places, as I've shown you, Christ says, "I will rise. The Son of Man will rise again on the third day." Yeah. If he rises on the third day, is there a it's third right. night? No, it's right then. Yeah. Yeah, that that's on the nose. Yeah. But yeah, it's I just yeah, it's a conflict of two different. It's, for me, it's just like a conflict of rise on the third day or or be there for three days and three nights yeah. i know you're saying there's the middle ground yeah. which is that there was no actual specific between them it's yeah. around about time yeah rather than this time yeah which i get i mean even when he says to the the the, the, the jews in the temple you know i'll destroy this temple and i'll recreate in three days yeah i get it's another marker to three days yeah i get all of that yeah but it was just a very specific prophecy that he puts out there yeah. If you, if and you then look up at all the places the where three it says days. three days appears. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah, it, it does. It, it's again and again yeah. and again. Yeah. Um, and my point is that's why I reject this idea. And, and I guess what's important about this is ultimately, if you believe Christ was crucified and resurrected, mm -hmm. it's a very minor point whether you believe that that crucifixion occurred on the third day, on, on the Thursday, mm -hmm. or on the Friday. Mm -hmm. It's a very minor point. It is. You know, it or, is. on the Wednesday, because I think the High Holy Day people, they make it the, the, the Passion started on the Wednesday night. The crucifixion happened on the third day. Yeah, Thursday. Six after six o'clock on Wednesday is essentially Thursday daytime until yeah. six o'clock Thursday afternoon, which becomes Friday daytime. Yeah. And then six o'clock Saturday, sat yeah. Yeah. Sunday daytime. Right, let me just so show on. you. I want to show you how many times it says on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 4, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day. Mark 14, 58. We heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. And then in that same verse it says he was speaking of his body. Yeah. In Matthew 16, 21. From that time Jesus began to show disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. John 2, uh, 1 to 10. On the third day, there were, oh sorry, that's a different on the third day. <laughs> yeah, Luke, we've yeah, done Luke. There's a lot of mentions. 10.40, and God raised him on the, the third, third day. day. On the third day, on the third day, on the third day. Yeah. So there's no reason for us to jump through the hoops of the Islamist mm -hmm. thinking that we've got to demonstrate that three Christ days and three, three nights. days and three nights. Yeah. Because they don't understand the passage they're quoting. That's all part of his example yeah. to Jonah. Because if Jonah's spirit was crying from Sheol, there's another way we can interpret that passage, which is Christ was talking about the way Jonah was in the yeah. belly of the whale. So at the same time, if Jonah, let's say, spent five nights in the yeah. belly of the whale, five days, yeah. and then Christ said, like Jonah, I will, uh, the Son of Man will basically be in the heart of the earth for three days, uh, five days and five nights. Yeah. But then every no, no, no. other passage is saying three days, yeah. and then he only does three days. Is that kind of the comparison yeah, so that you, that yeah. five days isn't really the essential part of that exactly. message? Yeah, exactly. That's, the essential is the dead. That is what is happening. That is what yeah, is happening. Yeah. Is that Christ isn't Christ is just continuing the time reference mm. for the sake of the symmetry. Yeah. But you weigh Christ's words against everything else that the Bible says yeah. and everything else Christ said. And Christ again and again and again, on as I've shown day. you, is on the third day, on the third day, in three days. In three days. Yeah, which yeah. means if there's three days, there's no third night. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. And no need to be. No. Right? And, and my point is that these kind of cheap tactics played by the Dower team. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a good one because it stumped me for a minute. It stumps a lot of people. Yeah, and, and it, it just made me think, all right, because if you can't find an answer to it, then yeah. you're, obviously you're, you're, you're in a boat afloat about yeah. huddle yeah. a little bit. And, yeah, um, and, and, and the Christians that are going for the High Holy Day argument, like I say, at the end of the day, they believe what I believe. Christ yeah. was crucified, yeah. Christ was resurrected, and he rose on the third day. The essentials are there. The thing that we disagree is how you calculate the three days, whether it's got to be a literal or whether it's more a... a Just a, a in loose, line with a story. Yeah, whether it's a more loose yeah. sense of time. And yeah. I actually agree with a more loose sense of yeah, time yeah. argument. I do, yeah. I, 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 I think that actually does yeah. make sense in hindsight now I think about it. It does make sense. That he's just keeping in line with a story that he's relating to. Exactly. Basically. Otherwise, yeah. 
you know, you can't relate to a story if you don't relate to a story. Especially if on, in other places he's quite specific on yeah. the third day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and my point is my point is that that the the high holy day argument. Mm. It, it's it's you know Christians can make that argument. Yeah. Like it's a perfectly good answer. Yeah. It's so now like you have it. Like two different answers. You can weigh up which answer yeah. suits you best. Yeah. Helps you to understand it best. Definitely. And just go with that one. Yeah. No, it's true. You know. Yeah. One of the reasons why I go with the, the sort of more traditional answer is because for two thousand years Christians this have been commemorating the crucifixion on a Friday yeah. and the resurrection on a Sunday. Yeah. And I and I don't think they got it wrong. Yeah. I also think that this whole argument about precise timing, mm -hmm. it's because of our modern world. It's because yeah. when we say eleven o'clock, we mean eleven o'clock. When your boss says start work at nine, they mean start work at nine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very modern thing. Go to cultures where they're agricultural, they haven't industrialized. When they say in the morning, I'll meet at nine, nine could be anything. In the morning yeah. or nine o'clock could be True. anything. Quarter like, to nine and quarter past nine. Co well, could be anything from <laughs> yeah. eight o'clock yeah. to 11.15. Yeah. An example was when I was in Colombia, someone said, I'll meet you at one. I forgot, right? I missed it. And then they called me at two and said, are you still coming? And being English, I ran to the meeting yeah, place. Yeah, sorry, I'm so late. I am so late. When I got there, my friend was just sat there casually. Chilled out. Chilled out. Because <laughs> in Colombia, their concept of time is, is so yeah. much more relaxed. <laughs> Speaker's corner is like this. So I bet Alex is having yeah. a bit of a problem. It can be a bit distracting. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. Problem. So, bro. Yeah, the concept of time for different different people in different yeah. places, different times themselves. Jesus was speaking in an agricultural yeah. society. I understand. Specific time references that are a bit looser than in our mind yeah. today. Yeah. And this is the reason I try not to get when I come here on the odd occasions that I try not to get into anything with Muslims or, or say anything about you know the Bible because they'll pull you into something twist it and then kind of make you the laughing stock because yeah. you're you're you now don't understand what I'm talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. when you thought you did yeah and I find that quite a dangerous yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a dangerous path to be on right, this brother is wise that's what you should do if you're a Christian <laughs> yes. and a guest in the corner zip it <laughs> zip it unless you have learned apologetic yeah. don't engage the Dawah no. They just need the attention. Yeah, yeah it is. It's just a, their method of just like belittling yeah. a little bit. Bro, you are welcome to keep in touch with me. Uh, that'd be amazing. Now, are you yeah. living in London? I do, yeah. I live in London. And sister, again, you, you, if you want to keep in touch, you're more than welcome and we can talk about this some more. Yeah, that'd be great. You got my email address, right? It's uh, in all of my, you subscribe to Bob's Speaker's Corner? Yes. In all of my description box, there's an email. Okay. Drop me an email. Sure. Let's get in touch. Yeah. I'll be looking through my emails tomorrow. So if you drop me one like tonight, okay. it'll land at the top of my inbox. Sweet. Because I've got like 1,500 and I get emails every single day. <laughs> no, I can't imagine. So if it lands close to the top, I'm likely yeah. to read it. All right, man. I've got a gift uh, for you. You know, this was a, a lovely conversation and I want to encourage you to press forward. Okay. You know, I've got a gift for you as well. Oh, look. You know. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Did you, how, how did you find this conversation? All right, it takes 10 minutes to get used to the cameras. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it can be a bit distracting. It's quite yeah. an intense, yeah. yeah, it's quite an intense it's environment. It's quite pressurised. Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Sorry? Yeah, recently. It's nice to see more police given the more recent videos. The thing is, the police have just given up. Oh, they're useless. They're, they're useless. Absolutely useless. It's quite disgraceful when I've watched the videos. Yeah. And I Literally. thought it would be really nice if you could get that said to, to Mega, not even like heavy, like not even Christians, but just normal people are starting to realize what's going on down here is a bit yeah. wrong. And they would just come here and almost just stand in solidarity with each other and just say, you know, this isn't yeah. what the park's about. Right, bear with us one second. Here we go. That's yours. Do you have um, a gospel? Right, here you go. In fact, let me give you a different gospel. One that we just spoke about. You see, I'm so used to this environment, it doesn't even phase me like what's going on behind it. Yeah? It's a bug. Is it a bug? Oh, hello. You're cute. It is. It is a bug. <laughs> yeah, it's probably eaten some of the... Right, here we go. That's for you, for new Christians. That's for you new Christians. That's your gift. And sister, that's your gift. And like I say, get in touch with us. We'll meet for a coffee. I'll take you out to the Marriott Hotel over there. 
really plush, nice coffee. Diamond, diamond. Only the best. Only the best. And we'll meet again. Yeah, get in touch. God bless you, bro. Remember what we said. Yeah, you got two answers. Decide which one's the best. Yeah, I think they both make sense in their own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. God bless you. It was lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Star, thanks for stopping by. You take care. Yeah, I will do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. See you, JC. Nice, one, buddy. Cheers, man. Just take care. Right. Enjoy, enjoy your day. Yeah. Stay safe well, and keep close. You're still here. I go well. Yeah. Okay, wait. I'm going to stick around. You're doing the speech. Yeah, yeah, I'll be doing the speech. Yeah, right. Talking about why Christians should abandon the Conservative Party. All right. Let's go. Yeah. What time is it starting? Or, but or the thing is, there's no point in trying to do a speech if things are going to flare up over here. Because yeah. attention is taken away. It, uh, you know, it'll just take it away. So yeah. I might move and then do a speech maybe a bit away from this. Okay. The drama, okay. sadly, in this part it ruins the debate. Yeah. And the thing is, what it's done is it's got to the point now where it just draws. People are looking for drama because that's the energy that's gone out, and now that's the kind of person that's coming to the people that are looking for drama. We've started noticing that a lot. Yeah. Like there's more like a, a lot more aggression here than there was before. Where it was more, got a muscle up, man. Oh, definitely. Got a muscle Where up. it was um, politics and just more open debates, discussions, yeah. theology, or yeah. and now it's sort of becoming more like. Um, Bullying, yeah, little bit of like suppressiveness, yeah. you know, it's yeah. changing a bit, it is it changing, is. and it is. I think we kind of can see what air direction yeah. that change is coming from. Yeah, I mean, right, so I'm gonna do a quick wrap up and then yeah. we're gonna go over there and, and do a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, be, I'll, you'll, you'll be in about five minutes. I'll over hear there. Your voice. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, that, 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 that was two sincere and genuine people who do come to the park, they, they exist, and uh. And he's a brief, previously appealed on soccer. He's got an interest in Christianity, and um, it was nice to have a chat with him and, and maybe talk with him about some of the reasons why he's not ready to commit. Keep this brother in your prayers because he's got all the beliefs of a Christian. He's just not yet ready to walk it out. So pray that he gets the courage and the strength to say, you know, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Keep praying for him. And um, yeah, pray for him. And the reality is, we, you know, like. It just goes to show the absolute importance of why the church needs to be constantly teaching apologetics. Because, you know, especially in, in this corner, because uh, an argument made by a dai, a very simplistic kind of argument, yeah, a very simplistic kind of argument caused him to be rattled. Now, thankfully, there are people doing apologetics out there. And to this question about the sign of Jonah, there are two answers. One that sits with the tradition of the church for 2,000 years, which is the one that you heard me express the idea that when Christ talks about the sign of Jonah, he's talking about the state that Jonah was in because Jonah prayed from the depths of Sheol. And it's dead people that are in Sheol, not living people. But the, the time reference in that passage is not to be taken literally. It's just a continuation of the symmetry because in other places, Christ and the apostles are very clear. The most repetitive phrase of the gospel teaching and the New Testament is on the third day, on the third day, on the third day. But there is another answer, and it's an answer that doesn't sit well with the tradition. Are you all right, bro? The Muslims are doing their use of bar. Sorry, sorry, what's up, what's up? See this guy? What's up with him? He said the comment. What did he say?